Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Well, welcome back to the class. Um, SS2 Economics for week 4. And the topic is concept of demand. Uh, I'm Mrs. Akonde, SA. Concept of demand. Alhamdulillah, we've discussed the theory of consumer behaviors. We've talked of utility, types of utilities, and so on like that. Now we want to look at the concept of demand. In this case, we'll be looking at, we'll be talking uh, about the many features and the types of demand and supply that we have. Uh, but for this week, it's strictly going to be based on demand. What is demand? Demand here is defined as the quantity of goods that people are willing and able to buy. The word willing and able shouldn't be missing in our definition. Is the, the demand is defined as the quantity of goods that people are willing and able to buy at a given price over a given period of time. The quantity of goods and services that people are willing and able to buy at a given price over a given period of time is what we refer to as demand. It is related to price because for it to become demand, the buyers must be able and willing, must be willing and able to pay for it. And this is what differentiates demand from want. Let's look at the difference between wants and demand. Wants here are mere desires. They are mere desires consumers have for commodities but are not supported or backed up by price. Back up with the ability or willingness to pay. I repeat, wants are mere desires consumers have for commodities but are not supported or backed backed up with the ability or willingness to pay. If I ask you students now, what are the things you want or you may likely want? Some of you, especially for the girls, some will mention a job, some will mention shoe and bags to match and so on like that. You just wish to have them, but you don't have the ability and willingness to pay for it. So, in other words, it cannot be referred to as demand because it it is not supported with the ability and willingness to pay but effective demand effective demand is the type of demand which is sup supported with the ability and willingness to pay effective demand is supported with the ability and willingness to pay that is effective demand is supported by money consideration that is the major difference between the two it is supported by money consideration demand function now demand function here is the function which states which established the relationship between an individuals and demand function establish demand function establish the relationship between an individuals and uh, an individuals and the uh, factors determining it it is a method whereby the list of factors affecting demand are expressed symbolically it is a method whereby the list of factors affecting demand are expressed symbolically by writing eg qd that is quantity demanded equals f into px y py and t and e where qd is the quantity demanded px is the price of goods y represent the consumer's income t is the taste taste of goods PY is the price of other goods and C is the consumer expectation. PY is the price of other goods and C is the consumer's expectation. 
So the symbol QD equals F into PX, P, 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 uh, into PX, Y, P, Y, T, and E is referred to as demand function. Demand function. Let's look at the example. Given that quantity demanded per period of time is a given function of price and that of and in the given function of price that is expressed and that the relation is expressed as Q is equal to 200 minus 2 over 5P. The function is given, given that the quantity demanded per period of time is a given function of price and that the relation is expressed as Q is equal to 200 minus 2P. Where Q is the quantity demanded and P is the price. So, find the quantity demanded when price is 80 naira and 50 naira. You are given two price, two prices here. So, we are to find the quantity demanded when the goods were sold for 80 naira and the quantity demanded when the goods were sold for 50 naira. So, meaning that we are going to represent, substitute the value of the price given for P in the function given. So, for question 1, when goods was sold for 80 naira, quantity demanded will be 200 minus 2P minus 2P minus 2P 2 over 5P. So, in brackets now, we have 200 minus 2 over 5P multiplied by 80 over 1. So, Q quantity demanded now will be 200 minus 2 multiplied by 16. So, quantity demanded will be 200 minus 32, meaning that quantity demanded when price is 80 naira will be 168 units. When price is 50 naira, quantity demanded will be, the demand function will be 200, Q equals 200 minus 2 over 5P. We substitute 50 naira for the value of P in the function given. So Q now will be 200 minus 2 over 5 multiplied by 50. 200 minus 2 times 10. So we we'll take away 20 from 200, meaning that when price is 50 naira, quantity demanded will be 180 units. And this follows the uh, law of demand that says the lower the price, the higher the quantity that will be demanded. When you compare the quantity demanded at price 80 naira with that of 50 naira, you see that the quantity demanded when the price is lower is higher than that of when the price is charged for 80 naira. Naira. Example 2. Given that price is expressed as P is equal to the first demand function given is to know the quantity demanded. This one is to know the price. Now, here you are given demand function as P is equal to 500 minus 4Q. 500 minus 4Q. Where P is the price and Q is the quantity. Calculate the price. When quantity is 20, that is, when quantity demanded is 20, how much price was charged then? What, what was the price? And when price, when quantity demanded is 50 units, we want to know the price for each. So we we'll go back to the demand function given and substitute the value of D for the Q. P will be 500 minus 4 into bracket 20, that is 500 minus 4 times 20, so 500 minus 80. So, meaning that when 20 units were demanded, price is 420, 420 naira. And when quantity demanded was 50, let's look at what the price was. So, 500 minus 4, we substitute 50 for the value of Q there times 50. So, P will be equal to 500 minus 4 times 50. 
which is 200. So P is 300 Naira. Meaning that when the price was 300, the quantity demanded were 50. And it still follow the law of demands that says the, the lower the, the price, the higher the quantity demanded. You discover that when price is 300, the quantity demanded were 50. Compared to when price were 420 and the quantity demanded was just 20. So demand schedule now. Demand schedule here is a list showing the number of quantities of a commodity. A list showing the number of quantities of a commodities of a commodity demanded at various prices. Demand schedule is otherwise referred to as demand table. Oh, and it is a list showing the number of quantities of a commodity demanded at a at 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 various prices. So a table, eh? a table showing or list showing the number of quantities of a commodity demanded at various prices. It is classified into two. We have individual demand schedule or table and is a graph of demand schedule showing the number of the number of units of a commodity that a buyer just one buyer that's why we refer to it as individual demand schedule it's meant for only one person or buyer that a buyer is able and willing to buy at a given prices over a period of time over a period of time so each point on the curve will represent a different price it will represent a different price and uh, will represent a different price represent a different price so demand curve is downward sloping demand curve is downward sloping from left to the right from left to the right so a market demand schedule or table is a graph which shows the total market schedule so in this case we have the aggregate number um we have numerous buyers there so it is it is it is a graph that represents the quantities demanded by the aggregate of all individuals of all individuals in the market so that's why i said we have numerous buyers here so it is obtained by summation of the individual demand curves it is obtained by summation of individual demand curves let's look at the future of demand curve one downward sloping it is downward sloping from left to right to indicate that the higher it to indicate its law which states that the higher the price the lower the quantity demanded it begins to fall down from left to the right as the price is going down so quantity and prices are inversely related Quantity and prices are inversely related. Then it represents price quantity demanded combination. It represents price quantity demanded combination, meaning that we have price represented in the y axis and quantity demanded on the x axis. So the price quantity demanded combination is is represented in the curve so we've talked about the features of demand curve we've talked about the demand demand schedule demand functions many of demand differences difference between wants and effective demand here so this is where we we'll step for first period inshallah next lesson we'll talk about the we'll talk about the types of demand and other things the types of demand factors affecting demand and so on like that assalamu alaikum
Faramatulai, Wabarakatu.